So uh, right now, uh, I'd like to start uh, our presentation with uh, uh, explaining to you actually basics. What is Interex? What is technology behind? And I want to stress for you to understand the concept because it's not very simple. Um, and uh, we talk then in the end uh, about specific protocols for you to use when you use uh, uh, particularly ac acute injuries, uh, acute or maybe simple chronic pain. Next time, next uh, um, training uh, session, we're going to talk more about complex conditions. So what is NIN and Interex? NIN, it's a, a treatment which Interex device delivers, and uh, it stands for non-invasive interactive neuromodulation. So the device itself, uh, as you know, it's a class two device and approved by Australian TGA, European CE, FDA for pain management, pain relief. So specific ways you can describe this is symptomatic relief and management of chronic intractable pain. Also, you can use it as adjunctive treatment and management of post-surgical post-traumatic pain. So basically encompasses any type of pain, acute, chronic, and neuropathic. And this is a family, the professional device, personal, uh, all the accessories uh, and the uh, and flexible arrays, which enable you to self-treat. So uh, a little bit understand about uh, non-invasive interactive neuromodulation. Um, so how would you dis describe this technology? So first of all, NIN is advanced form of electrical pulse stimulation. So the device, it's a uh, tapping with the pulse. Originally, this method came from uh, Tibetan tapping technique. The inventor uh, observed this uh, tapping of the meridian, tapping of the organs uh, with the pulse uh, fingers, but he thought, well, if I can tap with fingers and create the difference in my inside environment, why not I tap with electrical pulse? So it stems from there. So the pulse stimulation limited to cutaneous layer of the skin. Uh, what does it mean? It means that the Interex device does not penetrate the skin and stimulate the muscles like tense device would be. And because of this, the whole mechanism is also very different. And we talk more about this. So this uh, electrical stimulation, this is the first block. We call it neuromodulation. Um, is combined with bioimpedance feedback. And because of these two blocks, this uh, uh, modality has a high, very, um, uh, very effective therapeutic modalities. So neuromodulation concept, uh, you, you know about neurostimulation when you stimulate the nerves with electrical stimulation, in, for example, in this case, and you get results. But modulation is step up. So modulation results in centrally mediated responses aimed at restoring homeostasis. So again, what does it mean? It means that when the device is on the skin, the minute it's on the skin, uh, there is no direct stimulation as such as everything processed through the, your brain, okay? So if you see there is a vasodilation, this is not local reaction. It's because the impulse travels through the brain. Uh, brain would adjust, assess that, and then send command to release uh, neurochemicals like bradykinin, cytokine, for example. So all responses when you use Interex device are centrally mediated. So this neuromodulation is combined with bioimpedance feedback. How do you understand bioimpedance feedback? First of all, you need to understand the concept that skin, uh, human skin has uh, electrical property, okay? Uh, human skin would resist to electrical current when you place it on the skin because the phospholipidic barrier would stop that, yes? But it, of course, the strong current, it wouldn't. So at first, uh, um, it would be um, 
adjusting to electrical current. So it would resist at some degrees. And what Interex is doing, it's picking up the difference in this degree uh, resistance. So <clears throat> if uh, the body requires energy input, the human skin will be allowing this electrical input. But if not, the impedance will go up and protect the body from receiving interact stimulation. And, and interact is uh, analyzing this uh, situation and talking to the, uh, to the, to the body. In, in this case, the skin impedance changes in response to neurostimulation dynamically dynamically enabling the uh, dosed stimulation. So when we use the uh, Interex, it's not you, the operator, who determine the dose, how long and how much you're gonna stimulate. It's done automatically by the software because it reads the change in the skin impedance. So effectively, patient skin controls their output from Interex device and allowing current to come in or not, okay? So this is a quite complex uh, dynamic of the uh, two parameters. So electrical stimulation on one thing and feedback on the other things. But once you understand this, you will be able to simplistically, in a simplistic way to explain to your patient. So how did we um, end up having the Interex? Yes, uh, Russian inventors, uh, Alexander Karensov invented this uh, device um, and the team of engineers uh, always wanted to create a very good TENS device. They said, we're going to create the best TENS. So they analyzed scientific research and they looked into this and said, okay, we need this interactive waveform. We need so waveform depend on the impedance because if we, uh, if we do, uh, then we don't need to use the gel to protect the nerve index because interactive waveform changes uh, depending on the current. So if currents become very conductive in the tissues, yes? So uh, the uh, uh, software reads it and the, uh, the input, current input reduces from Interex, yes? And opposite way, where, where it's a very high density then it's 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 becoming stronger. So in a sense, in a sense, the nerve fine nerve endings are not going to be damaged by this stimulation, and this is a key. But once you remove the uh, uh, once you remove this uh, impedance, um, um, the 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 uh, gel which uh, supposedly protects your body. Then you can scan. You can see here, you scan to find optimal low impedance points. So obviously when you use TENS devices or ultrasound, you use gel and that on the skin, then you can't find the points to treat. But of course with, with the Interex device, we can scan and we can find sticky points and then we can target them. So, no gel used. Number two was very important to have high voltage <clears throat> and high current density stimulation. Uh, why is it? Because if stimulation is insufficient, then you don't get <clears throat> um, uh, you know, enough response from the body. Uh, even if you find the right points, like here, for example, there, the sticky points, but if you apply a very gentle stimulation, the body just wouldn't respond. So it has to be high, but it has to be non-damaging. And that's what we've got with Interex. <clears throat> so once we identify active points, we can put Interex there and target. So if in the process of targeting, we leave the device on the skin. In this process of targeting, what's happening? It's um, the pulses of Interex conveyed through the nerves uh, into central nervous system, particularly in the cortex. And the cortex has presence, uh, like a map of the whole body. So you have the map for the arm here, the map for the leg, yes? So <clears throat> in this map, you create a dominant, dominant. What does it mean? It means you give the address 
for the problem. So if, for example, you're stimulating, I had the fracture here some time ago. If you stimulate this area, the uh, corresponding part of this area in the cortex will be stimulated and created the focus. So then uh, your brain would effectively say, okay, what's going on there? Can I have a look? Can I address? Because I need to keep everything in balance all the time. So this uh, targeting is very important part of the treatment step. And, <clears throat> and then uh, look at the orange one. We have number four, electrode configuration. Again, in ordinary tense, you have electrode plus and minus, and you can put them close to each other. But look with interex, how closely they put plus and minus around. Yes, it's concentrical, but interaction is very close. So you can see this gray, uh, a gray uh, place of interaction plus and minus minimal, which makes the whole stimulation like a jet, very strong focused stimulation. Uh, compared to uh, tens, like between plus and minus, the, uh, the electron will be flowing through the tissue and they dissipate, the energy dissipate, where here it's very focused. So this configuration makes it uh, very special. And <clears throat> uh, because they are all together concentric way, look what you could do. You could move the electrode, right? With them device, they're stationary. So treatment dynamically enables you to uh, detect the restriction and treatment dynamically would enable you to give uh, much a different dimension to your responses from the body. In addition, as, our, as a therapist, we understand the uh, neurological uh, aspect. For example, we understand the shoulder is innervated through the nerves in the neck. So if you treat the shoulder, not only you treat the shoulder, but you need also to scan and treat the neck. Um, also, uh, you can uh, look at the neurological distribution as dermatomes, reflex projections, hands and feet, face has reflex zones. Uh, acupuncture points. If you know acupuncture points, you can target uh, specific acupuncture points using the Interex device too. So all together made the, our technology really special. So let's talk a little bit more about the um, actual Interex device. So Interex technology. So number one, we said Interex generate high voltage, high current and high density modulated stimulation with the least accommodation. That is a description. So this is a diagram that represents you like intense electrodes apart. And so the uh, interaction happen and dissipates in the tissues, whether with interacts very close, very focused interaction, giving you like high density stimulation. And that is a very important factor to get therapeutic effect. This diagram represents you the skin. So you just remember anatomy of the skin, phospholipidic barrier, which is called epidermis. Then dermis, um, uh, which is full of uh, sweat glands, blood vessels, uh, also connective tissue, yes. And, uh, uh, and then you have adipose tissue. So when we stimulate with interex, we literally work in within epidermis and dermis. You can see here a diagram representing me putting interex like this on the surface of the skin. So you see there those electrode one, two, three. This is uh, outer electrode and this is inner electrode. So the, uh, um, the current flows through the surface of the skin, but also through the skin. Okay, some portion of the current gonna go through the epidermis where there will be some resistance. And then through conductive, very good conductive layer of the dermis, yeah, and it connects. So the uh, difference between epidermis and dermis is what you see on the screen as your readings. So when we use Interex, we target points of low impedance. In a minute, I'll show you a slide to explain low impedance. Um, and in summary, the current of high density uh, high voltage variable. We have uh, both 
direct current and alternative current. So we have galvanic and faradic current together and it's pulsed. And each pulse is also put in a group of pulses. So within each pulse, you can get up to 10 kilohertz, very, very fast pulse, really fast. So it's kind of jump over the fence of body protection. So it can uh, reach the central nervous system. The impulse is interactive. You as a therapist can also group these impulses. You can put in a group of 15, or you can put in a group of 480 pulse per second. Each time will be different physiological response. And the points of low uh, impedance or points, most optimal points for treatment, we detect while we scan or when we use the flexible array. And this flexible array um, have the ability to assess the tissue. I have slightly different flexible array, but you could see each of them is plus minus uh, plus minus. So they kind of assess all tissue between here. So all these areas is going to be areas of assessment. So this is a patented biointerex technology um, uh, application. And you can use this when you use it on yourself. So you can lie on it and receive the treatment. Or with your patients, you can either prepare the a stimulation uh, to your manipul manipulation or uh, after you find your active sites in the end you can put the flexible array to so this is a uh, impulse uh, of from the interest you can see you have got like a little sinus microcurrent then you have this is direct current and then you have very strong uh, millicarbon, you know, strong, but it's still oscillating at all times. This is just one impulse, which you can group. And this uh, uh, amplitude and shape of the pulse, you see it here, is changing as you hitting the different areas on the skin. And when you hit the point, which is optimal point or point of low impedance, you can see how current changes. It becomes very small here. Um, there, there, oh, okay, it skipped. Okay, so now uh, let's discuss a little bit more about this situation of impedance. Uh, because impedance in physics uh, of the object and impedance of the uh, uh, biological impedance are two different things because uh, biological impedance is much, much more complex because uh, we are living creatures and we have um, the impedance constantly changes. So let's look at the diagram first here, representing it say, from a textbook to explain you concept of impedance. So this is a piece, piece of the skin and uh, the scientists put uh, at the back of the skin, the uh, electrode which makes uh, the impedance to drop, okay? And so what's happening, the all electrons are attracted to this area. Yes, you could see it all flowing towards this uh, low impedance. Pretty much, like look at the first sentence I put on the slide. Uh, current, electrical current always takes path of least resistance, just like water. So to me, this uh, manifestation or representation of the Niagara Fall. So the water is attracted to go in the depths, you know, it flows and it attracts it to come to deeper areas. So path of least resistance. In the human body, in the skin, the skin is completely obviously has electrical property all over. So if you place the current, it's going to try to find the least resistance and it's going to flow where the current is needed. Simply put, uh, if our skin is full of of water, like for example, babies and children, yes? So they will be easier for current to pass through. And maybe that's why children are so easy to treat, they get results almost instantly. And the treatment time is very minimal. 
compared to adults. And all people who have all this problem with colon, the uh, dehydrated skin is dehydrated. It takes longer for you to get the result. So just remember this, when in resistance, resistance decreases, yes, that means the impedance go low, but the current flow will increase, okay? The current flow will increase and opposite. When there is an increase in resistance or high impedance, the current will decrease. So this is the second diagram which showing that part of the uh, electrode is low impedance and this is high impedance. So high impedance like two mountings and this is like a canyon, okay? So the water will be attracted to this, to this only place of low impedance. No, it's not gonna flow to place of high impedance. So uh, interestingly enough, um, in a, uh, you know, Chinese medicine, like so ancient, in, in every ancient text, they describe human body is a, uh, the body which has lakes, oceans, rivers, creeks. And I think they describe current like water in the ancient text, just uh, meaning to, and they talk about qi, flowing qi. So the qi is energy, electrical current is energy, one form of energy. So uh, when you think uh, how eloquently this, uh, in the past Chinese people already have this knowledge, but they describe this all uh, resistance of the body through water bodies, it's quite clever. So biological tissues have ability to oppose the current flow. So it, like resistance, yes. But at the same time, when the current passes through, you have a conductance because the dermis is full of sweat glands, blood vessel, connective tissue, which is conductive substances. So, and then uh, at this point of uh, place, if you, uh, for example, leave the device on, you also build up a charge underneath the electrode because we have element of direct current. So uh, this by impedance, basically it's a combined characteristics, combined of resistance, how much at this point of time, at this point of skin, you have resistance to current, how much conductance to current and what's capacitance. And Interex monitors all these three dimensional parameters at all times. And it gives you a uh, beep, you know, when it achieves the uh, saturation with current of this, uh, or this point uh, of tissue and at this point of time. So tissue could be different types as well. It could be a uh, tissue with a uh, uh, low impedance uh, because they contain high water, like for example, deeper layer of the skin, nerve, muscle, and high impedance where we slow water contents like fascia, bone, and epidermis. And tissue could be in a pathological state, like um, if you have wounds, for example, of course, it's the abrasions, they open, yes, it's a very highly conductive, so low impedance. And opposites in tape, like a scar tissues, you're gonna have high impedance, so, or um, the innervation. Uh, lastly, uh, you need to know that these points of low impedance, that's what we target when we use with in, uh, Interex device. They could be, in acupuncture, they call them sensitive point, point ashi. Yes, so when you palpate and some area is sensitive, it's ashi. They're point of low impedance. Trigger points, physiotherapists, you will recognize this term, trigger points also have low impedance. Nerve junctions, also have low impedance. So whatever language you use, language of acupuncture, language of physiotherapy, or language of neurology, you always understand the low impedance point is what we're looking for with Interex device. And Interex device will be able to, uh, to detect. So for example, uh, on a, on a um, sprained ankle, if you start scanning, yes, you'll find some areas uh, conducting electricity more, so their point of low impedance. And you can even measure them with Interex device. It's gonna give you how much current gonna get through this point. And this is uh, when you have the injury. So in a normal ankle, you still can detect some points, they're standard points, but 
when there is a pathological process, body makes more entry points for energy. It creates for you portals so you can input energy. That's how body wants you uh, to assist healing. So let's talk about these portals. Yes, current of injury. So current of injury initiated in any tissue in the body, any tissue in the body. This is really important to understand. So not only here, this diagram from uh, uh, James Oshman book, uh, highly recommend to use this uh, book. They uh, have somewhere uh, the name. So it talks about surface injury, like skin. You could see, as I told you, everything in our body is electrically charged, not only just skin. We see skin typically have negative uh, charge on the surface, positive inside. So, but if you have uh, the, the, like broken skin, yes, that's what's happening. You have the pool of the negative ion here. Electrons are flowing here. This creates a current of injury. This is little vortices of injury which attracts the cells, positively charged cells. So every every point where inside the body when there is a disruption to homeostasis, there will be current of injury attracting, for example, fibroblasts to heal or leukocytes to fight the bacteria there. Everything, nerves, everything, everything in the body uh, electric, electrically charged. So it, trauma, living matrix, this is all living matrix, generates current of injury in bone, skin, nerve tissue. Injury to a living system initiates series of complex electrical current at the site of injury. Local current of injury is primarily responsible for the appearance of new cells. You know, the, uh, we have proliferation of the cells. So without electrical current, your body will not be able to heal adequately. And they both elect AC, alternative and DC, direct current, detected at this uh, site of injury and resulted in reduced healing time. Now you understand why you want to use electrical device when uh, there is an injury. And it doesn't matter, even if it's inside the body, you can still Im import a small amount of injury using the skin. Cellular proliferation, galvanotaxis, and preferential growth with nerves, okay? So growth of the nerves is also generated by these currents of injury. External electrical stimulation of the wounds, for example, of the wounds, produces effect that can jumpstart the healing phase. So this is scientists talking about healing in intimate connection with the electrical current. So when we use uh, Interex, what we do, we, um, we scan first, yes. I'm just going to show you a little diagram. So first of all, we scan slowly following the skin. We try to identify the connection with these vortices inside the body. Uh, for example, irritated nerve here, yes. And you could hear that the, um, as you gliding through, not only device sticks to this area, but the device also produces uh, sound disappears. Here, no sound, yeah? Why? Because the current is absorbed in this part of the uh, tissue. So uh, increased sweat gland secretion causes the high conductivity of the skin. Because remember, the inside the skin connects with the skin and skin is a part of the nervous system anyway. So uh, it expresses itself. So even inflammation is inside, like say arthritis of the knee, the nerve will be uh, irritated by inflammation. And uh, they remember from neuroanatomy, the nerve uh, input information, not only from, uh, you know, in each dermatome, you have information from meatome, which is a muscle, scleratome with the ligaments and bone, visceratome from the corresponding organ and dermatome from the corresponding parts of the skin. So this information is shared. It's a one functional unit shared of information. So if you have problem inside the body, it will be expressed on the surface of the skin. 
because this particular nerve is going to be firing more, causing increased sweat sensation, and sweat sensation make the skin sticky. And uh, this make also to produce low impedance. And then we target this area. So we place the device on the skin and we leave the device. So throughout the target, remember we create the dominant in the brain and we in connect your nervous system with the sites of injury. Uh, and the results release of endorphins, neuropeptides, regulative peptides, everything done to in order to complete and resolve the issue. Although you're on the skin, you connect that all entity with the central nervous system and that's how healing can happen. Okay. And um, at this point, you produce high altitude, um, amplitude, high density current to create the focus on the central system and that enables to release in the genus opioids, neuropeptide cytokines. And the last, uh, last stage of the treatment, it's you moving the device. When you move the device, you find one direction is more restrictive than other. What does it mean? It means that uh, the co collagen network, connective tissue underneath, uh, you detect this like fibrosis state of the fascia and you by flicking and working towards the uh, most resistive vector, then you can clear that, um, uh, that situation. So interactive constantly changing waveform is used dynamically. So you uh, make the collagen more pliable, you know, all the tangled untangled is wealth you moving the electrode. Pain relief mechanisms. Um, okay, so we're gonna talk a little bit more on advanced course, but basically uh, the changes happen in every level, cellular level, First of all, it's an energy device, so we optimize the energy metabolism. Number two, we increase microcirculation, uh, not only flex beam, but the interex device also increase circulation. You see it as a redness of the uh, underneath the skin. And we stimulate the release of cyt cytokines. So all cellular uh, mechanism will be engaged in healing. Number two, we activate fascia because we use a direct current network, microcurrent, and then we activate the all neurological network. This has come uh, primarily from AC current, alternative current. So we stimulate a delta and beta receptors, <coughs> receptors um, for pain, send the information to the dorsal horn of the uh, uh, neurons, uh, and then it travels through uh, spinal thalamic, spinal reticular pathways up to the brain, access also autonomic center for modulation hypothalamus. And also at each stage you receive segmental inhibition and the sedin inhibition as a release of endogenous opiates and regulative peptides. So right now I want to take you through practical parts of it. So you could see this is a device you, um, you probably coming on this course, you already know how to operate the unit. Uh, so I, all I want to do just a little bit, uh, explain what's the rationale behind your screen guide. So you have acute and chronic buttons, which is a very simple definition for you. Anything up to one month is acute, after one month is chronic, okay? So for you as a therapist, decision tree is only here. This button is only for uh, flexible array and uh, it has three grade of cycles, one for acute, two for subacute subchronic and three for chronic. So let's look a little bit more into acute and uh, chronic uh, subset. So this one you should uh, gauge by how far from the onset of this particular symptom or uh, this particular patient has. So you have to ask the patient, when first time did you experience this type of pain? And that will tell you if it's really close, like uh, days, uh, uh, weeks, few, up to four weeks, use acute presets, like 480 for measure and uh, 
nudge it through 60 to move the device, or you use second one. And then you go in time. This is a ruler to show you in time. So somewhere further down the line, you have a chronic situation, uh, weeks and months. Yes, chronic situation where you'd be using 240 to scan and 320 to move the device and cycle two. And then um, maybe even further, you have very chronic condition. You can use 60 uh, or 15 and uh, 15, 30 to, um, to move the device. So with this uh, stage, the pain is also chronic. Look at this. It's all the main of chronic pain, but here it's uh, good to use for people who have neuropathic pain, low pulse per second. And maybe use uh, for people who are hypersensitive, maybe not neuropathic, but hypersensitive. So why, why we do this? Because uh, when the body is already uh, agitated and um, in a state of uh, alert, if you start stimulating with 480, you give too much energy and you create healing crisis. So gently stimulate with low pulse, it gives you less of aggravation of the symptoms. Okay, so uh, no big deal if you mix and you say, well, I use, uh, you know, this instead of this, but what can happen? If you use chronic presets into acute, uh, serious acute pain, you won't get sufficient pain relief. And uh, the other way around, if you use too strong stimulation, you may aggravate it. But again, if you made a mistake, don't worry. It's not a, it's not end of the world. Here, I want to talk a little bit about how this device fits into healing. So uh, healing, uh, body heals in stages. And in fact, you have this uh, diagram in if you use device in sport mode, okay? So this, like a, in a time scale, when you just have an injury, yeah? so what's happening? The body have an injury, but not yet symptoms. Why? Because it, the inflammation has to kick in and it's not yet. So few minutes. If you use Interex at 480 at that point, very strong prickle, you can reverse the injury. And I've done it many times, including if you have a virus, if you use it on the glands, 480, at that point, when you just start feeling mm, something in the back of my throat, you can reverse the symptoms. Even COVID, you can reverse it. So the body does not go into inflammatory stage. But when you moved in and the body start producing inflammation, which is effectively <clears throat> what you see as inflammation, you'll see the um, swelling, redness, heat, and pain, okay? This is signs of inflammation. And you can see pain is very strong here, yes. So when you start using Interex, uh, you use it also on high presets, like for example, 360. What's happening? Um, you increase, you contribute to this process. You increase energy and all symptoms become really big. Like if it's a fever, it will be huge fever. If it's a swelling, it will be massive swelling. Don't be scared of that. This is normal because you're adding energy to the system and the body using this energy to uh, go through inflammatory stage. But your inflammation, instead of weeks, could going to last a few days. Very quickly, you go through inflammatory stage and it's already body in stage of uh, integration of the tissue, scar formation. So at this point, uh, you probably use uh, like 240 uh, frequency and you can see the pain is kind of oscillates on and off. But when you start treating, what's gonna happen? Pain will increase because temporarily you put the body back into inflammation. Remember what it's like because this is already chronic condition. And uh, then you stimulate, keep stimulating and you get resolution. Why? Even if you stop treating, the body already processed that and now it's ready to resolve. And resolution will be at stage of remodeling. 
stage of remodeling. And uh, um, this stage of remodeling uh, where you normally use 15 or 60 and stage of remodeling uh, where tissue replaced by the appropriate tissue, like the scar tissue will be no longer scar, will become muscular tissue, etc. So this is how you understand how Interex interferes at every stage of repair process. So a couple of case studies, uh, just to give you an idea, acute pain, we're talking today about acute pain. You all guys in Australia play sport. So why not to use the Interex device uh, here? Uh, you know, acute trauma. This is a very important, important, you know, important player. It was May 2008. Had serious double fracture injury dislocation, but he started work with his therapist, one to interact treatments a day, plus all their rehab procedures. So comparatively, he got back to playing six, eight weeks faster than expected. He was on TV, on radio with, they, everybody was amazed about his injury uh, and quick recovery from it. So another um, situation is um, back pain. That's what you typically gonna see. And when you treat, you're gonna see this very specific areas of pain on the body, which corresponds to some kind of blood stasis in the body. And when you stimulate with interacts, you move the blood, you move the energy, and uh, release and release endorphins and you get resolution. This guy was <coughs> two years without any, um, uh, you know, uh, two years uh, trying to find the solution. And um, he came to me four times, but after three sessions, he was pain free and start going to the gym and start exercising, lost weight. This is very typical. In four sessions are resolved weekly so one month, something which nobody was able to do, not medical doctor, not physiotherapist, not chiropractor, not osteopath, not massage therapist. So another example, uh, disc hernias, which you could also detect. Uh, this was case study of the person come with a shoulder pain. Uh, the shoulder was swollen and he went to do doctors and they uh, gave him X-ray and said, no problem with your shoulder and send him home with medication. Uh, well, he came to me and uh, I used a neurological connection, scanned his neck. And when I scanned his uh, readings on his shoulder, there was 40, 50s readings, but on the neck reading was 450. So immediately I understood there is a problem here. High conductivity, the nerve is trapped by what? Typically hernia. So send him to do MRI scan and yes, massive hernia. He's supposed to get surgery in two weeks time, but uh, we worked with him for three weeks and um, he had a personal device rented at home four times a day. I treated him once a week. And in three weeks time, he was uh, at zero pain starting from nine or 10. So you could get these results, but of course, uh, this hernia differ one from another. Uh, sometimes could be difficult. He was young and fit, but if somebody old, maybe it takes four months to resolve. This is acute injury we, uh, we attended straight away. So the uh, back of tongue flopped there on the foot, very strong pain. So we used Interex place, place, place at 480. And um, in 10 minutes, there is no pain. And this patient was treated 20 minutes within three hours. And I took the second photograph, look at that. No bruise and again, no pain. to work with the medical group. And the uh, use of the mucous membrane. Um, over mucous membrane, it's uh, basically putting on the tongue and anus. 
you could use the that you can that's why it's just the caution it's just for uh, you know transmitting and, and you know contaminating both ends so to speak um, but you can use it if you use your own device so if people come to you and have severe hemorrhoids they need to buy the personal device and use it at home. It's really effective, super effective on hemorrhoids. I uh, have uh, nothing but 100% anal fissures as well. So uh, patients who are prone to seizures, uh, if it's electrical stimulation, so you could increase the epilepsy. Uh, if patient is a driver, that's why I put this a caution. So if they're a driver, they may lose the driving license. But if they not drivers and you need to treat them and they have epilepsy, it doesn't matter, you can treat them, okay? Um, over this area, be careful because if you stimulate too much uh, on the throat, the thyroid gland gonna swell up and can be choky. So um, that's the only thing. But again, one couple of times is not a problem. It's consistently and too much. And with thrombosis and varicose, uh, do not use squeezing technique that wipe, you know, for directional squeezing technique because you can move the trompe. So you can place on over the inflamed varicose and hold it and then place and hold it. In this case, there won't be any problem and uh, it's all good. So now treatment protocols. Uh, just to remind you, first treatment protocol you do, which you could do it, uh, anywhere on the body, it's called scan target dynamic. So you scan the area of the skin, then you find the sticky area and then you target, you leave the device on and then you move the device in four directions. So this one can be done anywhere on the body, any parts, shoulder, face, foot, knee, spine, stomach, anywhere, anywhere. But we don't recommend to use it on the breast tissue, yes? Um, for the hair, for the scalp, use hair, hair comb. Dermatome treatments. Uh, dermatome is a, a part of the skin which in, uh, innervated by one specific nerve. And we use with uh, Interex a lot because uh, we use, first of all, in diagnostic sort of way. So like with this guy with this uh, disc, shoulder uh, what i done I, I you draw line towards the neck and you could see it's c5 c4 c5 yes over the neck so you need to treat not just shoulder but always the part of the spine and you could see uh, for example heel pain you need to understand that it may come from this uh, s2 sacrum <clears throat> or number four here, or knee. Very often people don't make connection <clears throat> between the knee and the spine. And yet, number three, number four, uh, number two, it's all around the knee. So you always have to include that. So the principle of dermatome, so you scan and work around this, finding all active sites uh, of the elbow. Then you scan the neck, and then you connect them with the device. So when you take readings, you, when you take readings, you can take readings, high readings, for example, here, then you work from here towards the spine, or sometimes you take the readings and this is like 85, this is 120, yeah? So this is the, the become your primary active site. You start working from there and towards there. So when you work over the skin, you slide, you find sticky, you stop, for directional sliding technique, then you go for the sliding, another sticky, stop for directional sliding technique and until you reach this area. So this is dermatome treatment. Soft tissue release, um, amazing, amazing treatment, which is done with using soft tissue electrode. Uh, I love it. I use it on every single patient, regardless pathology, regardless, whatever. <clears throat> in, in some cases, I suspect that, that pathology is uh, because of the uh, tight fascia. Fascia becomes sticky, not moving. And when it's not moving, lymph is not moving. And when lymph is not moving, what's happening? Uh, inflammation and uh, you know contamination with uh, bacteria, etc. So 
soft tissue, when you do it, uh, you work of the started from the hairline of the spine, go down, spinal processes in the middle. So if I would use this, I would go like this from hairline all the way down. If I find any sticky point, uh, like for example there, if I find sticky point, you press and release, press and release. And then you do a little bit of release motion, yes? Um, and strike and all the way down the spine. So you go all the way down the spine, all the way down to coccyx. So you, you kind of follow this, you draw a few lines over center, and then you start working in the intracostal spaces. And we, we call this technique Christmas tree. And again, you and go this way. So this release will take about uh, five, 10 minutes of your time, depending. But if you suspect the uh, fascia is a problem, you can work 20 minutes just on releasing fascia. And not only on the spine, you could do release fascia over the knee, over the uh, lower leg. Sometimes I work and release fascia, uh, especially in the bold people, I would just go all the way from the cranium, all the way and through the arms, through the legs, uh, typically um, what's happening uh, outer, like we be in Chinese medicine, we call this yang, yes, back, very hard course of the skin, uh, very, very tight, but yin, the inner parts of the skin is very, uh, and these people typically roll like this inwards. So they are this too strong, fascia, it curled the body and he is yin too weak. So you need to work and release all the fascia from outside to keep it straight. So shortened muscle syndrome, um, it's uh, uh, very important to understand this. That's what exactly I talk about. If on the outside, like on the lateral side of the knee, the fascia is too tight, this is normal uh, uh, alignment of the joint. See what's happening to alignment. It's become crooked. So in this case, this wear and tear uh, will be happening. So unless you release that fascia, you will never resolve arthritis, for example. And uh, with acidity, there will be crumbling uh, a little um, cartilage. And so that is, uh, is, could be a problem. So for this reason, you need to do soft tissue release and if we're talking about the neck, we need to do three in one protocol. Um, three in one protocol, I have all the technique, I have this recorded for you uh, with your membership, you can access and uh, see how it's done. Uh, but this is a description. So description saying that you have a specific uh, preset 11 in your uh, device, set your device to preset 11, plug the, uh, soft tissue electrode, preset 11, and then you slide electrode to the base of the neck and the base of the neck, you need to take the jewelry off. And the point is here, just underneath the trapezius muscle. So you find the point with the small 10% stimulation, you hear the ear lobe start twi twiddling, and then you kind of, put the, the, the handle a little bit up and then you just leave it on and increase the intensity. And now you'll see the, the shoulder will be contracting and adapting, contracting and adapting, yes, adapting. And then the other side, like this, like this. So this, uh, this technique is really, really effective for any problem in the body not just the neck and uh, uh, it's very good because what it's doing the contracts for three second muscle on and one off contracts and release and this technique will have uh, sensation of freedom relaxation and massive release of endorphins okay only three positions on each side three contractions on each side and please don't do this technique on freshly dislocated shoulder or very frail, bony, uh, uh, elderly, because it's got hooks, it can pinch on the nerve or blood vessels. When you use flexible array, it's very easy. You just put it where it hurts, 
and maybe use it dynamically. So if you put it around the knee, go up and down stairs, for example, for the knee. Um, and so the effect could be uh, also good. So what I encourage you to do after this session to use practical applications. This is a diagram. So do three scanning of the spine, finding active sites and work in three uh, directions or the upper part of the body. Okay, and do soft tissue release. A uh, couple more things for you to know. It's um, understand general zones. So general zones are zones when you stimulate like three pathways and the effect is on all of the body. Then stomach clockwise and again effect on the whole body. Face and scalp using comb attachment again effect on the whole body. And this is the uh, reflex zones. You can also stimulate with interlex and the effect will be on the whole of the body. So what we learn, we learn we can use uh, local uh, uh, treatment if it's just simple pain and injury. If it's becoming a bit more complicated, we can use dermatome protocol. For a chronic condition with multiple pains, uh, you can use spine, abdomen, and for neuropathics, which we're gonna talk next time, we're gonna use specific points. And we plan um, to treat, uh, for treatment planning, this diagram is very good because it's kind of defined for you. Here's acute pain, this is chronic, and this is hypersensitive. So in your mind, you have to have clear definitions. Onset, when did it start? And then according to with acute short treatments, but frequent, uh, with chronic 30 minutes, one twice a week, and with hypersensitive once a week. Preset 480, 90 to 360, that's typically what I do. For chronic, 240, 320, and uh, setting up prickling sensation for acute pain, tingling for chronic, and vibration for hypersensitive. Treatment very local with acute pain and chronic with dermatome and spine. Lastly, I want to tell you one thing which I didn't show you before, but it's very important for you to know. You can assist your patients if there is a situation, life and death, okay? Their emergency point, their points of acupuncture, and they should be stimulated in this order in the filtrum of their here, point number one, then point number two, and point number three. So um, what you normally do, you stimulate it very briefly, like this, boom, boom, boom. So first two points is to complete this circuit, electrical circuit in the body. And the third point is to start the heart. So if you see that your patient go into seizure, or if you see the patient fainting, having syncope, you can use these techniques. Um, they're very, very effective. So right now I'm going to stop my presentation. And uh, I'm sorry, overrun a little bit, but I still allow you time for questions. <laughs>